Hello and welcome to Corona Crisis. My name is David Haythornthwaite and I'm the chairman of AFC Filed. And over the next uh, few weeks and months, uh, I'm hopefully going to take you through what goes on behind the scenes of a non-league football team at times like this. Uh, we're going to discuss all the issues regarding uh, behind the scenes, the players, uh, off-field staff, all the things that contribute to the to the running of the club uh, and how we're dealing with the issues that have been thrown at us on a daily and weekly basis uh, so that it gives you a really good insight to the club uh, and the running of clubs in general. So I look forward to you joining me on this journey. David, thanks for joining us once again as we continue to look behind the scenes at AFC Firewood. Um, there's been a there's been a document published from the FA about agent fees. Um, it's created quite a lot of talk online, um, and obviously the figures of all different clubs have been have been posted as have ours. Our figure was nine thousand five hundred and fifty pounds, which too in much, too much. <laughs> but in comparison to the figures we have seen yes. at the top end and within our league, yeah. are not not that high in comparison. I think the main question is. Why, why are we spending that money? Uh, and, and number two, what are we spending it on? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I knew you were going to ask me this question and, uh, you know, uh, what I, I just went off to is, you know, get myself uh, uh, order a coffee and, uh, you know, so I was walking down the corridor, I, I, you know, I was thinking that it, 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 is, it is bizarre, really, because it's the only, it's the only business that, uh, that I know where, you know, we're paying effectively uh, fees uh, in, in this way uh, you know to, to, to agents uh, and uh, and some you know some pretty you know sub, as you pointed out some substantial fees I mean when you think uh, you know 265 million I saw that figure last night actually or, or maybe this morning I heard it but uh, you know that's 24 hours and if you think the 265 million would what that could do to non-league football, what that could do to help non-league football, uh, or, or even 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 teams, you know, in, in, in League Two, uh, if, if used to. I'm not talking about putting money down, by the way, to to, to pay players more. I'm talking about putting it down to improve facilities at grounds. So that, you know, a lot of grounds we go to, you know, are pretty run down. Uh, and they need capital investment. Uh, you know, the owners can't do it. There's not enough money around. So there's a, in, you know uh, investment into other parts of of the wider aspect of the football club. 265 million have gone a heck of a long way. And, and you know, I've said almost from the first uh, one of these uh, sort of documentaries uh, series that I'm giving that uh, I felt that you know it was a Premier League who need to be helping out. Uh, not the government, as I've said on many occasions, but the Premier League, because there's no doubt about it, the funding is there in the Premier League. And, and just, if we're talking about there, an example, just 265 million on agents fees. So, and, and you know, with some very famous agents there, there's a lot of high paid players and, and they managed to, to get themselves in the, in the middle of a deal. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty, uh, Pretty horrific number, but uh, you know we, we have it at our level. Nothing nothing like that. I think you were telling me where you that maybe highest in our league was Notts County. Probably made sense. Uh, you know, um, big club uh, just got relegated, so I'm sure that they you know will have used agents a lot. But uh, you know they're not my favourite people, and I've made uh, I've made no no bones of that. They're, uh, in most cases, are a necessary evil. Most agents that I've met, I've met probably over over a period of time, probably you know ten or twelve agents, uh, and I can honestly say that probably two of them are genuine people. Uh, the rest are, are are only interested in the money. They'll sit there and tell you, yeah, I'm interested in the welfare and the well-being, and I want to make sure he's this and that, but. Once that play, once they've got that player at the club, you don't see them again. I've never seen them again. They just disappear because they've got their fee, 
they got their cut of the deal and, and they move on. Uh, I think that you know one of the arguments would be that the agents would give well players you know aren't capable of looking after themselves and, you know they're, 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 uh, and, and I think that does play us down a lot if you think about it. I mean, I think just in our team, I mean, we've got some pretty well educated, articulate, intelligent young men playing for us. And, and as, as we've seen, uh, many of them uh, are more than capable of looking after themselves, uh, you know, in, in when things get tough. They don't need their agent to do it. So uh, I think that that's one of the things that we're going to see uh, change uh, as, we, as we move forward. We've got the meeting today i can't be there that's a, the, the video meeting of, uh, of all the clubs uh, of all the clubs the club representatives i think we're up to 11 clubs now uh, on this sub uh, committee i'm talking about uh, you know a, a wage cap in our league i think i've talked about that we had our first meeting three weeks ago we had to postpone last week's because of the fact uh, of course that uh, we've got a big league meeting so the meeting's taking place today. Uh, there's some proposals being put forward, some, uh, some, some documentation we might be able to use. A, 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 a part of that salary gap, uh, as I explained last time, is that the, the cost of the player will include the agent's fees. Uh, and that in itself uh, will obviously start to, start to drive down, uh, shall we say, maybe the use of agents. Uh, and also, uh, in, in some cases, the exorbitant fees that agents charge because there's only so much money in the pot. And you know, if I was a player and I was being offered seven hundred pounds a week, and I was offered a, a signing on fee, but I knew that I had to give fifty percent of the signing on fee to the agent, and that the agent wanted five percent of my total deal, so. It, that could be another five, six, seven thousand pounds. I pretty much, and you were asking me, you being the club, were asking me in the new world to take a pay cut. I'd be seriously thinking about whether I needed an agent to, to look after me anymore because the money's better in my pocket as a player or in the club's pocket than in the agent's pocket. You don't need an agent to negotiate a contract, it's just uh, say, a necessary evil. So, a lot of those things are going to change. I don't think that you're going to change much, uh, Adam, at the, uh, at the Premier League level. You, know, you just won't get away from that fact. And that's how it is. It's big, big money. Uh, it's how it works up there. But I think once you start to, uh, and League One and League Two, as you know, we're talking about salary caps, that, that sort of landscape for agents is, is going to be have some pretty slim pickings over, over the next few years. Well, you, ultimately, what, what the agent gets paid for is negotiating the contract. Really, that's what they do, negotiating the contract. Most times, most times, I and mean, if we go to, shall we say, player recruitment now, we go to player recruitment. I think I said last week that you know, we've sat down, we've got a list of players that the, the, the gym, is interested in you know it's Jim's it'll be Jim's first full season it'll be Jim's first full season uh, where shall we say it develops into his team very difficult coming in where he came in we're on a losing streak he inherited a bunch of players a lot of those players are on big contracts it was difficult to get to move on we didn't have a lot of money to bring other players in the result is probably going to go down so Jim now has a chance to, to, to put together his, his team, yeah, his team. And by I mean his team, I mean I'm talking about backroom staff and, 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 and drum staff, just, just as John T. does is coming as chief exec. Uh, and part of that, big part of that, uh, on field relates to players, doesn't it? And so therefore, when we sat down last week and we looked at, say, the areas we wanted to strengthen. As, as everybody knows, we've got a core of 11 players who are already sort of signed up, signed up a long time ago. And we've got 
our targets. Now, those targets were, were players that now there is so much data and research available, you know. Don't you've heard of some of these like Y Scouts and things like that? So, Jim, because, particularly because he's furloughed and he's probably nothing to do, but he's done it anyway, but he's got a lot more time to watch games and videos and that, pick up phones, talk to his friends and contacts. Then, there's nobody on there that he's really gone, yeah, you know what, the agent told me I didn't know anything about that player. None of them. However, having got that list of players, we, in most cases, will have to go to their agent to, shall we say, talk to them. Uh, because officially you're supposed to talk to the player through the agent. I mean, that's how the agents want it to do. That's how the agents would say the etiquette is. Uh, I don't think etiquette's particularly, you know, etiquette and agents, those two words don't go so together very well in my view. So that's what you have to do though. So you then have to approach a player. Well, a lot of times you'll approach a player and he's been told, well, oh, you have to talk to my agent, you know, because he, he's, a lot of times the player's kind of quite frightened of the agent because they'll sign up a contract with an agent. The agent's got a contract, say, for two years to look after that player. And, and part of that is to say that, you know, whatever terms they agree that he's being employed on, you know, whether it's 3% of the salary or 5%, whatever, percentage of transfer fees, whatever he's signed up to, you know, it's a bit like any agreement, you have to stick to it. So invariably, if you go to a player, he'll say, talk to my agent or we have to go directly to the agent and then the agent will come in and, 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 and negotiate the fee. And uh, once, you know, once they get to know, to know you, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll then get their tactic. Uh, so, uh, you know, one of the things that we, we talked about many, many times is that there was a, a belief uh, the file were paying, you know, big money to the players, you know, I think we've talked about it before, you know, everyone, everyone, a lot of people thought Danny Rowe, for example, was, you know, on two and a half thousand a week, and this player was on that X, you know, Tom Walker, you know, if you read the Stockport website, Tom Walker moved to us for two grand a week, you know, it's all nonsense, it's all absolute nonsense, our wage cap was one thousand, our wage cap is a thousand to this day, nobody gets more than that, and the... The point is that once the agents find that out, they know that. They don't basically bring any players. So if they've got a player that needs 1,200, 1,500 quid, they don't even bring them to you. Because in particularly in Fowl's case, they know that we would not move off that. So that that sets a bar, if you want, for those agents. And uh, But still, you have to deal with them. Uh, you have to deal with them, uh, and, and I would say that probably every single player that we've signed at this level. Uh, but. Barring actually, bar one, funny enough, Danny Felisco, uh, who, who we haven't had to deal with, and uh, we, you know, he's, he's, he sort of does all his own stuff, and, but he's got, I think I said last time, you know, he comes from a footballing family, and dad, dad's, you know, been around a bit, knows, thinks his dad's his advisor. Uh, but we had no problem. And you know what? We had no problem at all with Danny Rowe until Danny got an agent, you know, and, and if he's sitting there, he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because, you know, Danny was playing for us, he never had an agent, good as gold. And then an agent comes along and says, Danny, what are you do?" I mean, effectively says to him, Danny, what are you doing there? Not only are they underpaying you, this is what they say, not only underpaying you, uh, you know, I can get you 1,800 quid a week. These numbers, these numbers I've told you before. 1,800 quid to come and play at Oldham and you want to play League Two and they're not looking after you there and they agitate and move, they agitate it. and they put in this kid's mind that, you know, he's being badly done to. He was quite happy playing football, all of a sudden he goes on, you know, Dad, I, I, I am being badly done to. The age, I should be getting a lot more, I should be playing a lot higher standard. And, you know, Danny Rowe was, was, a, was a fantastic example of that, wasn't he? An agent, ag, uh, you know, agitating a move to a basket case club, uh, you know, and I can say that uh, with, with, without any fear. And, you know, Danny went there and for the whole of March and April, never get paid. 
And I said, you know, I think I've said on here before, you know, if, you, if you're making a thousand with me, but you get paid, it's far better than 1800, where well, you don't get paid. So, and I think Danny knows that, and uh, you know, he'd be the first to, to, to admit that probably, you know, it, it wasn't a great move. It allowed him to play higher football. But that's a, that would be a typical of, of what happened with an agent there, and it's a really, you know, good example. I say, a happy lad, happy with his wages. People always want to make more, just natural, all of us. I'm sure you want to make more. Everybody wants to make more. My wife wants more spending money. Whatever it is, we all want more money. It's just natural human being. But in general, we're pretty happy. But agents come along and, and agitate them. We've seen that happen with Pogba at United. Every now and then it gets in the paper. Ah, oh, Pogba wants to go back to so and so. And I think I've now got to the conclusion is that's a classic agent thing now because Pogba seems, you know, reasonably happy playing at United. The only reason they want to get him out of there and want him to be unhappy is because that, whatever his name is, the famous Italian, I can't think what his name Because if he moves to another club, he'll probably get 10 million. 10 million. So it's kind of wrong, isn't it? The principle's wrong. Well, I think you've summed up your thoughts. <laughs> well, I hope so. You know, I can, you know, that's the purpose of, of, of these, uh, of these interviews isn't it is for me to try and share with people as honestly as i can you know how a football club runs and, and agents is one of those things that we have to deal with thank you